Hi, I'm Hildur Guðnadóttir and today I am reflecting on my work as a film composer. Well, it was so beautiful to see this this come together because when I started working on, on Joker, I um, I got the script and I wrote a lot of music just based on my feelings of the of the script and and the, you know the the tonality and and the, the sense of musicality that I was feeling internally. Interestingly, when I was writing this music, I had the sense of I had the sense of movement, like like um, you know obviously you know I was. You know the cello was my instrument, so there's there's a lot of like hand gestures that I was in. There was, there was a lot of this kind of upper body uh, sensations that I was that I was feeling in the um, in the music, but I had never said anything about that to Todd, and and there was nothing in the script that indicated any sort of dancing or any sort of movement, and and in this scene, in particular, it was. You know, it was it was really just like not much was happening in the in the script in the scene. You know, it's it's kind of he runs into this bathroom and throws away his gun and looks in the mirror and says oh, or something like this. You know, that was the scope of the scene <laughs> in the script. Like it was it was really not very not a big plot point or a big moment. And somehow, as they were starting to to shoot the scene, and and Joaquin somehow wasn't he just wasn't really feeling it or something. You know, he was having a bit of a hard time just getting into it and and um, and they had already been you know listening to this music that I that I composed for the film on, on set and and uh, Todd puts on this um, puts on this track and and he says well maybe you just uh, you know just listen to the music and and see how it inspires you and then the scene just appears you know in connection to the music and he starts he starts these this this dance and these movements which were so similar to what I was experiencing when I was <laughs> recording the music. So one, uh, you know, and it was just so beautiful to see how it all unfolded and, and, and it kind of just like is this impromptu situation, you know, and then the cinematographer, you know, starts following the, the movements and it becomes this kind of like beautiful fluid uh, scene. And then when Todd sent it over to me I, I just I just couldn't believe that this was the you know <laughs> was what I was seeing because it was so similar to what I had kind of experienced myself so I, I feel like it was just such a beautiful moment of, of you know all the elements of, of filmmaking coming together the director he just was so open to us bringing what we had to the to the table and he was so willing to to let us kind of, you know, do our thing and then and then he just like lets this un unfold and and uh, you know it's 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 a, I think it's a really um it was a beautiful uh, beautiful moment I think. working on Chernobyl because it's a it's a real story based on real events that that so many people that are still alive experienced and, and uh, for me that was a very different process than working on a fictional story where, where you know anything anything goes really and, and and I think there's a level of respect that you have to have for for the story and and the survivors and and you know people that were affected and people that lost their lives and 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 so on so 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 I really wanted to be as true as I as I could to the story itself like I I really I really didn't want to sen sen sensationalize anything like I I didn't want to storm in there with uh, you know big big drums and a string orchestra and and kind of 
you know, over dramatize these events because they're horrific, you know, enough as 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 they are. So I went to this power plant in Lithuania, which is the the sister power plant to Chernobyl. So it's exactly the same as Chernobyl was, uh, and recorded a lot of sounds that that turned out to be uh, the the main source of of the the score, basically. So there's no instruments in the score. It's the, all the sounds in the score come from from this power plant. Uh, if, with the exception of my voice, was, which was like the the human element, because I really, and you know, it was it was a lot of hassle to, to work in, in this way, and you know, it took a really long time to to be able to work with these sounds in in, in this way that worked uh, musically. But I thought it was just so important to try to try to understand and to try to capture what radio activity sounds like, because that was, I think, the you know the main character in the in the series that we couldn't see with our eyes you know you can't film radioactivity and you can't explain it really with with words so i wanted to create the sense of feeling the radioactivity through the music and, and in order to do that you know I, I i felt like i had to have actual radioactive sounds so to say and the bridge of death in particular it's it's just such such a heartbreaking scene, you know. You have all these people on this on this bridge, and they're they're so in awe of what they're seeing, and and for them, they're seeing this incredibly beautiful, you know, situation of unfold before their eyes. But we know that it's going to be the death of all of them to 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 stand on this on this bridge, and you know that most all of them will die or get very ill as as a as a consequence. So it was just you know, trying to find the balance between being, uh, you know, allowing the emotionality to, to be there, but still g keeping a sense of, of uh, horror, you know, about, you know, what, what actually will happen, you know, that, that was, uh, yeah, that was kind of what I was trying to achieve, you know, to, to be emotional, but not too prescriptive, you know. <laughs> How's the writing going? Not so well. I keep hearing something. Schopenhauer measured a man's intelligence against his sensitivity to noise. Do you ever find yourself overwhelmed by emotion? Yes. Yes, it does happen. Well, Tar was so interesting on so many levels. I think Tar just is like layer upon layer upon layer upon layer of of you know things that you can dive into. But but I think for for me personally, you know, I was writing music as a person in a film who is posing as another person. <laughs> You know, but trying to write as herself, you know, through through her music. So it was it was so many layers of emotional complexity. Because also, you know, we in this in this film we have a character who has created this completely made up person who is who is Lady Atar and who's like you know the master of the podium. You know, when she is uh, uh, conducting conducting these big orchestras but but somehow that's also just all a lie you know and and she in her heart of hearts wants to be writing music that's much more experimental and, and fragile in, in its nature and much more seeking so she has these insecurities about herself that comes through in the music that she is that she's writing you know that's completely disconnected to her her podium person you know so it was just it was so just so interesting you know to write through and with and into all of these layers it was it was really really wonderful and um and also really exciting to to see you know to feel the the actual real life response to the film you know because it really you know for better or for worse uh you know however you want to look at it really shook the the world you know with with its take on how we are allowed to uh, write stories about women or represent women as as you know what is the spectrum of of how we can how we can talk about women's characters and their actions and and their 
their uh, uh, positions of power or or not or non power you know and 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 of course first and foremost the position of of female conductors you know i read so many articles about female conductors uh you know in the real world after after this film came out that was such a um, such a joy for me to to you know whether or not you agree with the approach that we we decided to take for for the film you know because obviously a lot of people were not in in agreement and and uh, uh, uh which i which i completely respect and and uh, understand of course but i think the real victory in in, in whichever camp that you <clears throat> Uh, and up in is is that that um, female conductors got a lot of space in 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 you know the mainstream media and and I think that was just just fantastic you know I, th I think it was really it really put a lot of focus into the women because we have so many brilliant women conductors and I, and I worked with a few of a few of them who are just so unbelievably brilliant. Uh, at their job and so such amazing musicians you know and it was so fantastic to see just like the um the focus uh, finally uh, um, um going towards them i've seen a million of these so-called psychics each one a fake i do not believe in psychics come with me to a seance spot the con i can't detective you are here to discredit me but I can talk to the dead. I'd give all I have to hear my daughter's voice. If someone wants to be heard, we are here. Listening. Haunting in Venice is probably the most classical score that I've done to date. And in my work, I will often be exploring, you know, building instruments or found sounds or implementing, you know, these kind of uh, experimentation into the into the music but in this in this score I was really excited to to just focus purely on the music and focus purely on the instruments and I think that was also largely because I was so interested in the music history of of this period and I think it's it's such an interesting time in music history where composers and the, and the world at large really you know that there's they've, they've seen their world completely, you know, been bombed apart in, in, in during the Second World War. And, and they they start asking all of these questions like, you know, why are we doing this? What is music? What is sound? What is the these all these preconceived ideas about the world and about the music that I that I've had and, and who am I and you know where am I going towards? Like how am I gonna rebuild my my world and um, and I think composers, especially the, the kind of forward thinking, um, you know, experimental uh, classical composers, if, if you will, um, were were really abandoning melody and abandoning these these old uh, musical structures. Like the sonata form is, is is completely thrown out the window, and all these all these old structures, and, and you know they're 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 seeking to rebuild themselves and reinvent themselves by by exploring, you know, extended techniques of, of playing and, and uh, uh, different forms of, of musicality. Like, you know, we have the, the atonal, very mathematical sense of everything is very structured and, and you know, where do emotions fit within that, you know, either that very uh, mathematical approach or, or chance compositions become become a thing and all these all these different different ways of of uh, uh, of expressions that the, the composers are, are looking towards and we we're in the film we're really seeing exactly those transitions as well like we're we're seeing Poirot essentially asking the same questions you know so we're much closer to him and his emotional journey than we are in, in a lot of the other films you know we get to go deeper into his into his uh, uh, emotional depth. So he's exploring, you know, who he was before the war, what happened to him during the war, and, and who he will, who he will be, how he will re, uh, you know, reinvent himself and uh, himself. And, and he, so he retires, and he, and he's trying to, to you know, just focus on gardening and, and you know, start a completely different, different uh, uh, career. So, and I thought that there were just so many parallels between 
what we're seeing in music history and, and what we're seeing him him go through. So so basically how I approached it was to kind of superimpose the use of melody into these moments of time that we see in the film, you know. So we have in the beginning, you know, he, he wakes up from this this dream state and, 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 and as a lot of times in the film, we're unaware of, you know, whether this is real or it's not real, if it's a dream, if it's a ghost, like where 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 we're sitting. So so the way that the melody is is working in that in those very first uh, uh, moments is is almost like in this bardo state between non melody and melody uh, uh, between not going somewhere and, and going somewhere and between the waking and the sleeping between the natural and the and the supernatural so that's almost like this this in between state and um, and then we have the moments where we're um, looking at the at the past uh, for example in in connection to the the girl who is one of the first victims, uh, you know, we, we're looking at her in the, in the past and then we're, we're approached with this, this, you know, these romantic, you know, more romantic melodies and, and we're taken on a more um, uh, a melancholic, uh, backwards looking outlook. And, and then, for example, towards the, when the world starts breaking apart, we have much more like atonal music and structural music and everything in unison and working very fracturally as 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 things as things start to uh to 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 crumble and then in in the end where the where we have the big reveal and the and and the and the hood on it and the world kind of restructures itself to to move forward then we're leaning towards the more atonal uh, uh um tonality that 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 these composers are are moving towards moving uh, moving forward you know so so it's there's this big connect, connection between between the history of the music of this of this time and the and the story in, in my mind <laughs> 